Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking about LLMNR again. Uh, this is part three of a series. I already showed you how to capture hashes. I showed you how to crack them. But now I'm going to show you how to relay them inside of an Active Directory environment to where you don't even need to crack a hash. You can just send it to another machine. All right, cool. Let's dive in. So we're on another lockdown here in Portland, and uh, I'm I'm trying. This is my attempt at growing facial hair. So uh, I don't really grow facial hair. So please uh, forgive me as I'm participating in somewhat of a no-shave November. Um, by the way, I did a, a, a the last video I announced that Jeff Parker, you won the uh, the social engineering book in the giveaway I was doing. So if you're interested, man, hit me up. Um, I'll probably try to reach out to you directly, but. If I can't get a hold of you, I might have to give it to somebody else. Um, also, if you guys wanted to be a part of a giveaway, I did just get these cool infinite login stickers. So if you're interested in one of these at all, I don't mind sending it to you for free. Just hit me up, uh, you know, probably on Twitter up here in the top corner there. You'll see that Twitter uh, handle. Hit me up there. I'm happy to send you one if you want one. But anyway, we're here to talk about LLM and R. So I just made this blog post today, um, and we're going to want to make a video to go along with it, right? <laughs> so um, to just kind of start and set the stage, I want to go ahead and, and share a little bit about what we're doing in this attack um, and what we're not doing in this attack, because I want to make sure that we get our terms down correctly. So what we're talking about today is we're taking a, a net NTLM hash, and instead of trying to crack it offline, you know, pull out the clear text credential, we're going to just relay it to another machine. Now, there are some prereqs to be able to pull this off, but I'll show you what those prereqs are. Um, but one thing I really want to make sure is you, you'll hear the term like pass the hash a lot. Um, and there there is such a thing as a pass the hash attack, but that is not what we're doing here today. Um, so doing an NTLM relay attack is basically you're capturing a hash while it's in transit. You're capturing an NTLM V2 or net NTLM hash while it's in transit, and you're relaying it to another machine. Um, this is different than doing a pass the hash attack where, let's say, maybe you dump the SAM database out of a out of a computer that you have compromised, um, and you pull the NTLM hash out of that, and you pass that around the network. The hashes are very different. You cannot perform a pass the hash attack with a net NTLM hash, and likewise, um, you can't do a, a relay attack with an NTLM hash. So, just want to try to clarify those two things, but. In reality, the idea is the same. You take a hash, you send it to a machine, and you authenticate that way instead of using a password. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, in order to perform this attack, like I mentioned, there are some prereqs. So you need to be on the same subnet as the victim that you're actually targeting. So what I mean by that is if you look in this typology diagram here of the attack I'm going to simulate, we've got four computers. We've got two workstations, one server. And all of these three devices are a part of this nba.local domain. Okay, so they're all on the same subnet. They're all joined to the domain. The server acts as the domain controller. And then these are just two domain joined workstations. And then part of the same subnet, we've got the attacker Kelly Linux machine that I'm going to be simulating the attacker perspective from. Um, now, this machine's not joined to the domain, but it is on the same subnet. It's on that same 10.0.1.0 slash 24 subnet. Um, and that's very important because what we're going to do, and I, if you don't know about this, maybe go check out like part one of the series where I kind of break down doing LLMNR poisoning, um, where we respond to any LLMNR requests on the network and we intercept the net NTLM hash. Now, instead of just taking that hash and working with it offline or whatever, this is where we're going to take it and we're going to relay it to one of these machines that are part of the domain and try to authenticate as that user from whose hash we stole. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Okay, so to pull that off, you do have to be on the same subnet. Obviously, LLMNR must be enabled on the network, right? Otherwise, you would have never captured that hash to begin with. Now, you still can use tools like Responder to capture 
uh, a net NTLM hash, even if LLMNR is not in the environment. Like I was just on an assessment where like every 20 minutes or so, for whatever reason, I think they have like a vulnerability scanner that would run on a schedule. Um, and we were able to capture a hash, an, a net NTLM hash for a privileged service account and it wasn't due to LLMNR. It was due to it trying to authenticate to all the SMB shares on the network. So you can still use this attack in those cases. Um, but from what I'm talking about today, LLM, LLMNR must be enabled on the network. And then also you need to have SMB signing disabled and, and or not enforced on the target that you're hitting. So let's say Kobe Bryant here is signed into this machine. He does something, his computer does something that triggers an LLMNR broadcast. We see that, we respond to it, and then K. Bryant sends us its net NTLM hash. We then would relay that, let's say, to this K. Irving machine, right? So LLMNR had to be enabled on this computer for us to receive the hash, and then this K. Irving machine must have had SMB signing not enforced in order to take that hash and then authenticate with it. Okay. Cool. Tracking with me so far? So net NTLM, or sorry, SMB signing is disabled by default on most versions of Windows desktop operating systems. Windows servers typically have SMB signing enabled and enforced by default. So usually for this type of attack, you're going to be targeting just workstations. Unless, you know, the IT admins have made some configuration change and have turned off the enforcement requirement on the server operating systems. So it's always worthwhile doing like a, an in-map scan. There's like an in-map script you can run to see whether or not SMB signing is enabled. If you use CrackMap exec, um, that'll actually tell you in the output, it'll say, cool, SMB signing is enabled or not, right? So if you see a device where SMB signing is not enabled and enforced, this is a potential attack vector you could use. Cool. So I kind of already explained a little bit about the typology. This just goes into detail about it. All right, cool. Let's quit talking. Let's just show you the attack. So to begin with, um, I've already got two installs and two tools installed. We've got the responder tool. And then we've also got impact it. If you don't have either one of these, literally just go out to GitHub. You'll pull them down that way. I think if you just Google like GitHub responder, responder, <laughs> you'll find this guy, right? And you can just do a quick copy of this guy and then type in like git clone and then that repository, right? Um, that'll clone it down and then there might be an install instruction. If you read the, the help documentation, it might tell you about that. Likewise, you can do impact it GitHub. And I've used it before, so likely, um, you know, I don't think this is it. Um, I've used it before, so if you like go through any of my other like walkthrough videos or whatever, you'll see probably me walking you through how to install it. Um, but yeah, you'll need those two tools. Once you have those two tools installed, let's go into the responder directory. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to edit this responder.config file.cnf. And there's a couple things that you will need to tweak. So in my last couple demonstrations of LNMNR based attacks with Responder, we have used SMB right here. We used that server on the on position, as well as HTTP. We also had that server on. Um, but in order to leverage the attack we're about to pull off, you're going to want to set both of those to off. Because instead of having Responder spin up those servers on those protocols, we're actually going to use a tool called NTLM Relay X. And that tool is going to need to use those servers instead. So you need to turn them off. Otherwise, in DLM Relay X, won't be able to use them, right? So cool. Let's just close out of here. I don't need to make any changes, right? Because mine are already turned off. So we've got that. The next step is let's just start building out our command. So if you copy this from my blog, you can just follow along with me that way. I'll throw a link in the description. Otherwise, feel free to type it out. Um, and I don't want to actually run it yet. So let's go look at this command. So I'm just saying, obviously, Python responder.py. We're going to use my ETH0 interface. Your interface might differ. And then a flag of R, D, and W. And then I go into detail about what each one of those do. Um, for example, R is being used for net BIOS. And then D is being used for domain suffix queries. So all we need to do at this point is get that command running, which I'll go ahead and spin it up. So what that's going to do is it's going to listen on this ETH0 interface for any LLMNR request 
going on in the network. We might actually get some activity here because it happens all the time in an Active Directory environment if it's not disabled, but I'm hoping we won't trigger anything quite yet. So we've got that. And then next up, we need to go check out this other command here for NTLM Relay X, which is a part of the end packet suite. We just paste this in, go to clear all this out. So we just need to change the dash T for target. And we need to actually specify the IP address of the target we want to hit. So let's go look at these two computers that we got here. And I'll just go in and minimize my attack machine for a minute. So on this machine, we've got the user K Irving signed in and it's running with an IP address of 1.200. And then on this machine, we've got a user of K Bryant with IP of 1.11. So I think for sake of concept here, I'm just gonna go in and target this 1.11 machine. Um, and then we'll trigger the LLMNR request from this K Irving machine. So I'll copy this as my target IP. And we'll throw that in here to the flag of dash T. And then we need to add in this SMB2 support. Now you may not need that flag if you're dealing with like an older environment with maybe like Windows 7 machines, um, or if you're dealing with an environment that might have SMB v1 running. Uh, however, that is a very legacy protocol, uh, definitely not secure to be using. So for the most part, you're probably gonna need to be using SMB v2. Um, like in my case, if I don't have that flag, the attack's not gonna work right. So cool, I'm gonna spin that up. And now we got everything just kind of queued up and waiting. So let's see if we can trigger something. I mean, we could wait it out, you know, likely if the machine reboots or when a user logs in or when they're browsing the network, we'll probably get some activity um, that will automatically trigger the LLMNR request. But we can force it along a little bit quicker here by just going into this machine. And if I run, I can just try to browse to maybe like a file share that doesn't exist, right? Like fake, right? I'll just type that in, we'll press enter. And if we go look at our attack machine, Bam, check out what just happened. Okay, so we've got a ton of LLMNR requests here, right? And we're getting these poison responses that are being sent back. At this point, what's happening is what you've seen before in my previous guides, where we're just poisoning that response, we're capturing the NTLM hash, but instead of showing that hash up here on the attack machine on the left side, um, we're just relaying it over to this other tool on the right side. And by default, that tool is going to come in here and it's just gonna dump the SAM database for whatever target machine that we're going after here. So you can see I've got these NTLM hashes for the admin, the guest default, right? So I've got these, and look, check it out. I even got this like local dlillard user account hash. So this is awesome. This is where I could take the NTLM hash and do a pass the hash attack if I wanted to. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, happy to show you a video. Otherwise, feel free to Google it. I'm sure it's already out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of the attack. We can get a little bit like crazier, I guess. Let me come in here. We'll just clear this out. I'm going to run this again, but instead of just running it, I'm going to add the dash C flag. That'll be for command. And this will execute, I believe it's PowerShell that it's executing. So if I were to say dash C of who am I, we spin this back up again. We've got everything running just like we did before. But now if we come back to this machine, we can trigger another request. We say, okay, and check this out. So we got this executed specified command on the host and it returns back into authority system. So you can see we're actually getting command level execution. What command execution at the, uh, the level of system on the machine, which obviously is as high as it can go, right? So that's really cool. That means we could really do whatever we want. Uh, we could even combine this with say, I don't know, maybe that guide I showed you about how you can use a Covenant C2 launcher with CrackMap exec, right? You guys remember that one? Maybe you could take that same PowerShell encoded command, throw it into here, you might get a C2 launcher. I don't know, play with it, man. Like, try it out, see what you can do. But I feel like this stuff is really cool. Now, one thing I didn't show you yet um, is in order for this attack to work, in order for us to get the system level command execution, what had to be enabled, right? Let's recap. So obviously LLM and R needed to be going on in the environment. We needed SMB signing to be disabled, which it is by default on this target Windows 10 system here. But then we also needed to make sure that the user that we stole the hash from was an elevated user on the account on the on the system that we're targeting, right? So if we were to come in here to like the control panel and check out the user accounts, 
we do see that this K Irving is an admin on this workstation. If I were to change this just to a standard user, now I don't know if this will work because <laughs> sometimes you know it takes a minute for this to propagate, like you have to sign out, sign back in type thing. Um, I'm just curious. We'll just run this again. We'll see what happens. Here goes the attack. Nice. Notice this time we don't get that NT authority system command back. I'll just clear this out to make it easier to see. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Right? Nice and clear. There's no output. Run the attack again. And we get a authentication succeed, but then an access denied. OK, cool. So this confirms we did capture a valid user hash, but it didn't have the admin rights that we needed to actually perform like command execution or dump the SAM database or anything like that. So this is an awesome tool to use if maybe there's like a service account or if you're able to capture like a domain admin account, any account that's elevated in the environment. Now, let's say maybe you don't know, like, you know, you see a hash that maybe is popping up in your responder history all the time, um, but you don't know where it might be a, a local admin to. One thing you can do is instead of specifying just T, you can do dash TF and you can actually provide a file. So you can come in here and you can say like targets.txt, right? And if we were to come in and just create a targets.txt, you could have like 10.0.1.1, 10.0.1.2, right? You can just create like a whole list of targets that you know have SMB signing not enforced and then pass that here. And when everything happens, the attack gets performed. NTLM Relay X will just go through each one of those one by one and see what it can do. All right, that's it, man. I, uh, I hope that you guys found some value in this video. Um, please do let me know some other things that you'd like to see. I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, but until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for checking this one.